Hi everyone, we're down at the Rejuvenation Place. I'm with my mom, Gina Norton. Um, we just wanted to kind of do a little video and talk about her story and how she was able to get back to work so quickly. Um, what are the things that she's been doing that have gotten her so healthy and back into her work where we missed her so much. Um, can you tell us a little bit what, about what was wrong with your health? Sure. In um, 2009, um, we were moving to Atlanta and I had a lot of um, stomach, like uncomfortable feelings in my stomach. It, the best way to describe it is it felt like butterflies. And when I moved to Atlanta, I saw, uh, I, I went to establish a primary care doctor and I told her a little bit about my stomach and I was like feeling like I didn't really have an appetite and I um, just always felt like I was nervous or had some kind of anxiety in my stomach. And um, I had actually a, G, a GI test every single week for a year. So 52 GI tests at Emory in Atlanta and every single time I had a test they came back and said everything was normal that I probably just had menopause and anxiety and I was 48 at the time so they would refer me to a psychiatrist and being naive and not doing a lot of research I had listened to what the psychiatrist said and each time I had an appointment the symptoms increased the the uncomfortability of my um, stomach the feeling of having butterflies or some kind of like chest compression felt like something was in my throat all the time sounded a lot like anxiety so at the time she was prescribing me I was on Zoloft, Trazodone, um, Xanax for breakthrough, Clonazepam, Concerta, I think those were the uh, Abilify so those were all of the antipsychotic drugs that they had put me on and I can't believe I was driving around Atlanta as a zombie. In 2012, um, for Christmas, I went to visit the boys at college and my family was there and kind of did an intervention and said, you need to get off the medication. You don't smile, you're, but at that vacation, I was literally the sickest I think I've ever been. I was unable to eat. I was watching everybody eat. I didn't want to complain. I was getting massages, trying to treat like what, what I thought was anxiety with aromatherapy. I was doing everything and I was running to the bathroom and secretly throwing up in the toilet because I was didn't want my family to know. Um, but I thought too that it was just anxiety at that time. Well, my husband would be in the supportive person he is. He said, maybe you should move home back to Bismarck and just see if the anxiety gets better and live with your parents for a while and live with my daughter, Brianne. And so I rotated between both and then that was like in August of 2012. In December or in November of 2012, the boys came home from college and I remember Austin coming up to the bedroom and saying, Mom, I cannot stand seeing you like this. I want you to go in to the doctor and you need to do something different. And um, so he took me to the emergency room. And when I got to the emergency room, the doctor there said, Gina, you only come to the emergency room for life-threatening illnesses, not chronic illnesses. And at that time I had lost 30 pounds and just was unable to eat. And so she sent me away from the um, ER that day. And then my daughter, Brianne, came over and she said, I'm gonna take you back. Made a phone call to the hospital and said, you know, we were turned away, but it said on um, the thing that your pain will be believed. And to come, so we came back because we felt like it was urgent. I came back and they said to me, um, I heard you called the hospital police on us. And so Brianne said, well, I know I work at the hospital and a lot of times patients fake things. My mom's not faking, she's lost 30 pounds and I want you to admit her and figure out what it is. So I had one test and that test was done by Dr. Fogarty, who was the radiologist at the time, who is a big Canaway um, supporter, which is, um, going into the story later, I'll talk a little bit, but I wanted to mention his name. He, after having all of those tests done in Atlanta at Emory, that day he diagnosed me with superior mesenteric artery syndrome. 
and it was life changing. Actually, he, um, I, I could not have the surgery done here. I needed to have a vascular surgeon. It was confirmed, and I was asked to go immediately to Minneapolis. And um, I had a vascular surgeon that was was familiar with SMA, which is superior mesenteric artery. It's a compression disorder, so my main artery to digest food and my duodenum were both should have had a pad of fat between the two and my anatomy pinched off those two things so I couldn't digest anything I had to throw it up and I wasn't passing anything through so since it had been since 2009 and it's now 2012 at the end of the year my stomach got super lazy from not being used and from vomiting so much so I developed something called gastroparesis which is a paralysis of your stomach um, I had a surgery it was similar to a gastric bypass and afterwards I was taking erythromycin um, some pain medication to get through and within about six months I was able to eat normally and I was doing really good for about a year and a half uh, a year and a half or after that year and a half I developed like some of the same symptoms I stopped eating again I was having um, the chest pain the feeling in my throat and so I called my surgeon and he said it's been two years go ahead and go have a scan they couldn't find anything here so I went to Minneapolis I drove myself there and um, I had what was called MALS which is a, a median articulate ligament syndrome another compression disorder which is unheard of and textbook that someone would have two of uh, compression disorders in their stomach so they they snipped the ligament that was causing the compression between my stomach and diaphragm and then which was not allowing any oxygen into my abdomen which was causing pain in all my organs and then of course I wasn't digesting food once again um, after that surgery I recovered in about six weeks um, I felt really good for a couple years we started the rejuvenation place in November we opened of 2017 and in January we all got the flu and my nausea didn't stop um, I called my surgeon and said hey I am feeling nauseous everybody has had the flu do you think it's anything I should worry about it's been like three weeks and everybody's better but me and he said I think it's been two years it'd be reasonable to have another scan so I had another scan and I had SMA again. So last March, a year ago, 2018, I had another bypass, which was, this time was a more severe bypass. They moved my intestines from the right side of my body to the left side. And then um, in, that was in March. In April, May, I was kind of ramping up and starting to feel better. But by July, we had some extra stress on us and I started to feel like I couldn't eat and my appetite started to decrease. By mid-August, I knew it was a serious issue. I wasn't gaining weight. I was unable to eat at that point. I was living on bone broth. And um, I called my surgeon and asked him, I said, I know you offered me a feeding tube when I had my surgery, but I was too proud to get a feeding tube and so I refused it, so by October 1st, I got my first feeding tube um, of this 2018, so about six months ago. And um, I just kept having the feeding tubes coiling up into my stomach, and it was like every three to four weeks, I'd have uh, a feeding tube backing up and um, putting, emptying the toxins into my stomach which wasn't emptying and I was having severe gastroparesis. So the, the formula that was going into my feeding tube was actually curdling in my stomach. And so you can imagine how toxic my body was getting. I felt like I had the flu every single day. Um, in December, uh, I had a conclusive test that, um, that the curdling and everything in my stomach was bad that that tube needed to come out and I had a tube emergency placed here in Bismarck. That tube was too large, ulcerated, um, 
my diaphragm, my lungs, and it also was kinked and within two days was unable to work and I got C. diff. So I was in the hospital by ambulance December 28th and then in the hospital transferred to Minneapolis where they could better address the C. diff. Um, I then was in bed for three weeks through December and then I noticed one day my tube was once again backing up so I wasn't in any pain but I decided to go in to the ER at a different hospital um, at, in Bismarck and um, that day they discovered that yep my tube was back in my stomach and so they were going to replace it. I specifically asked um, them you know are you experienced I was very nervous I just recovered I was down to a really low weight and um, really didn't have much reserve and so I went in and I trusted the doctor and she put in a tube that was too large and during the night my stomach acids leaked out all over my stomach which gave me third degree burns I had on the outside because it's hydrochloric acid um, she someone I don't remember exactly how it went I was out of it very sick um, they re they put another plug into where they put that tube in but those that acid caused me to have abscesses in my lungs um, all through my abdomen I ended up being in the hospital for 28 days coming home with a port and two non-functioning tubes um, I got home on February 14th on Valentine's Day and my all my kids came down to visit and Austin brought me this CBD and said, Mom, I think you should take this full spectrum CBD in the syringe and, um, and then uh, it will help you. And at that time I was, even that day, I got my drains removed that day. I was still not able to sit myself up in a bed. My husband had to lift me by my armpits and bring me up in the bed. Um, the, two, the two drains came out that day. I started this and within four days, I was taking oxycodone, six tablets a day. And um, within four days, I was down to one oxycodone just before my, like after my evening meal. But I would, my appetite was getting better. And then after two weeks, I, um, would be able to say that I believe that it was the CBD that was helping me because I was eating very regularly plus snacks. So really the biggest change since your post-surgery coming back now this last two weeks, and you obviously look drastically healthier, different, better, brighter. Um, the only difference really is the Canaway. The yeah, CBD, that and what are you taking every day? What are you what are you taking now these last two weeks every day if you want to share kind of what okay what's so, been working for you so I have been doing the hemp oil the premium hemp oil the full spectrum in the morning I put it in the capsules and then um, somebody s suggested a shake and so I do a protein drink in the morning that includes um, hemp seeds uh, peanut butter coconut oil and then um, the Canaway protein powder and um, and I mix it with juice and I start my morning off with that and then this is really the only thing I've changed and I am now off every single medication and no pain medication I do take a Tylenol occasionally if I have some discomfort but last night my physician, my surgeon called me. When I left the hospital, he said, Gina, you come back in two weeks. We're gonna permanently put a feeding tube in surgically so it will not coil up. And I said, I don't want another tube. And he said, if you don't come back and you don't get that tube, you will die. Um, last night, he called me, it was seven o'clock. I was eating and he, I told him that I had been doing the CBD and he said, I just can't believe that your stomach would start working after not working. Um, and there's, it just doesn't happen that way. So I, my sister's a chiropractor, and I told her I'm like eating, I'm 
you know, like regular, my stomach is emptying, everything is working exactly like, um, no. like my body should be working. And it's just been, it's three weeks today, yesterday that I got out of the hospital. So we've tried another CBD company before and you didn't have a huge turnaround right away. So why, I guess, that brings me to my next question. Why do you believe Canale is superior to other CBD? Well, like as you know, we researched. We Last year we got some CBD in, in Chicago because we first saw how the industry was really all about the CBD and the benefits of it. Yeah. But we, and we bought, invested in some, but we didn't like, we didn't re ever reorder because I don't think any of us felt like it was like significant of a change to, to reorder. And then we kind of like about six months ago, maybe got into it a little bit for the skincare because we realized that at our med spa, it would really be something good that we could bring in um, to help people with their skin because um, really the CBD, it attacks our inflammation in our body and inflammation really has to do with pretty much everything skin related. So that's pretty much why you brought it into this, the spa. You think that, I mean, obviously getting people healthy is always a good thing to do, but aesthetically for your skin, it's gonna help mostly why? Because of what properties. It decreases the oil production for people that have excessive oil or acne. It has vitamins and antioxidants in it. It improves your cellular mm. function, so it's anti-aging, and it helps your system work as, as it's supposed to be. So it really benefits everybody, but it, and it's really nice to help people out. And I would say with the Canaway, we, we chose this right before I went into the hospital. I told Adam and Austin, you need to check into this Canaway while I'm gone because it sounds really legit, but the doctor that diagnosed me with the SMA six years ago is a big proponent in, in Canaway. It's triple lab tested. It is, um, there's so many benefits to it that it has so much medical support and just being on it and seeing the, like, and all the testimonials from other people, not just myself. Right, yeah, the whole the whole community, kind of in that K-Way Global um, in North Dakota. You hear stories every single day of how much it's helping people um, sleep, how it's helping people's hormones regulate, which also, that is a big thing for skin is when people have hormone, um, they're going into menopause, they, you know, their skin gets drier, it can have breakouts, and it regulates that uh, endocannabinoid system in your body. So you can achieve that homeostasis. That's right. what we're all looking for, right? <laughs> so the Canaway business is huge right now. It's like, Tons of companies are coming out there, but the reason we chose Canaway is the triple lab tested and the um, the very many research that's been done on it. Obviously, there's no case studies. The Echo Connection obviously is really big. They give back. Um, I'll kind of tell you about the Echo Connection a little bit and how Canaway is involved with that. It's their charitable um, company that they work with, and they actually donate ten thousand dollars worth of products to. Families who are in need of CBD products and cannot afford them. So uh, maybe you have a family that has a son or a daughter that has epilepsy. Um, so they'll donate those products to give them. Actually, this right here, this product right here is what they would donate to that family. So it's a pretty great company. Obviously, getting involved with the company that gives back is always a win-win and a plus for us. And we've, we, I have actually done a little secret shopping and around town and I just have to say one thing is that Adam, Austin and Brianne are very knowledgeable on the CBD they have taken and they listen to a lot of doctors, um, videos, webinars and such and so if you do have a question we are the place to come into to ask those questions. We don't maybe can't answer every single one of your questions. We are very knowledgeable. Uh, Brianne being a nurse and the boys having a lot of um, emotional training. time invested into it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And so, you know, like um, it's great for the whole family. The another reason I 
All my grandkids are taking it, and their age range is from two to 13. And Everybody's CBD deficient, so we all need CBD. We need to nourish that endocannabinoid system. Exactly. So come on down. Even your puppies. <laughs> yeah, even There's, your puppies, yeah. your pets, your cats. Yep, so everybody can benefit. So we, we definitely, if you have questions, you wonder if it can help you. I mean, people with cancer, or actually, what we really like to say is even if you're healthy, you want to stay healthy and keep your system um, boosting your immune system. So that Don't you, wait for an emergency. Right, exactly.